isn't that important at a young age for oh women? I mean, anyone, but especially women? Well, in the classes that we teach for teens now, it's uh, pretty balanced in terms of men, boys mm -hmm. and girls. Mm -hmm. And um, the result that we get back from these boys is just as powerful because mm -hmm. they trust themselves. Because mm -hmm. there's this mystique that's taught, as, as you know, in this mm -hmm. culture that men come in genetically wired up knowing how to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not true. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, more so, women are a lot more of a target. You know, in other words, men obviously rape, they do more crime against women, you know, yes, just in statistics. So by having a, a woman start at a younger age, even eight years old, pretty soon it would be even out if our society started teaching women and men, let's say both, you know, we don't have to this, this differentiate, um, at eight years old. Yeah. By the time they're both 16, they're equal. Yeah. If not, you know, they won't be able to differentiate um, it to be who's better, not the sex. Exactly. One of the things that I realized when I first decided to teach men, because as you know, I started mm -hmm. training women, I thought, well, somebody who knows they have their own power mm -hmm. isn't going to try to take yours. Mm -hmm. So to give men the confidence of knowing, um, I, I have my own power. Mm -hmm. And that kind of man is not going to be a perpetrator. Mm -hmm. So that was that was what shifted for me when I when I started training. Yeah. And I think um, again going back to a philosophy, if the boys are learning at eight years old, they don't have the power. It will end much sooner if our society started training both men and women right. in PE classes, whatever, at eight years old. The boys gonna know. Right? If I do something to this She's woman, me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I don't have the power. Uh -huh. When I'm 22, I don't have the power yeah, because right. now a society is equal. And I think it's someday, I hope, you know, we achieve that goal. I hope we do, Doug. I know every time you train someone, and um, every time I train someone, I think, well, there's one, there's one less place for violence to go. Okay. So, um, and, you know, I used to catch a lot of flack, especially from the New Age community, of, oh my God, you're promoting violence. I said, no, I'm not. <laughs> of the about 8,000 people that we've trained, to the best of my knowledge, only about 10 of them have ever had to use their physical technique. Now, they take what they know into their relationships, into their, their careers, into, you know, their spiritual work. But having the gift of having done something and know you can do it means you don't necessarily need to pull it in. Exactly. And if you're walking around and you're scared, I mean, that's a magnet mm. for violence. Exactly. Yeah. And with kids, um, the school system, unfortunately, really doesn't teach them how to focus or how to learn. Or martial arts does teach them how to focus, mm -hmm. teaches them how to learn. And most martial arts students that I know are also good students who are at younger ages. And they teaches them respect exactly. for themselves and for others. And I'm noticing there's a lot of disrespect lately in our society and I don't know what it is. It's a culture thing or, or what's happening. You know, it kind of even scares me wondering what's going to happen in the future. Um, I think we're, we're hitting critical mass here. Mm. Um, I think it's a very powerful time to be alive and really a powerful time mm. to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And there's a very dark force mm -hmm. that has emerged. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a very a force for light that's mm -hmm. emerged. And we're going to have to choose as human beings mm -hmm. what we're going to stand up for. Mm -hmm. You know, um, to me, disrespecting Grandmother Earth got spun off into disrespecting women. And um, I mean, this, I have no place else to go. This is the only home I have. Mm. So to be able to walk a little more lightly on the earth, to be more present with what we're doing, take responsibility for what mm. we're doing. And to me, Doug, that goes back. The first, the, the, uh, the origin of that is, can I take care of myself? Mm. If you don't know that, I don't care what else you know. Mm. You know nothing. Exactly. One thing good about knowledge, no one can take it away. That's exactly right. Mm. And that there's always more of it out there if you're, if you're open. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll say aloha and thank you for having us on the show. I am very happy to bring you into this.
this community. Um, and I'm proud of you. And um, I'm glad to have you know Doug as your Sifu. And yet to learn exactly what a privilege that is, but you will. You're a pretty quick study, Steve. Um, five years, you've helped me with workshops just selflessly. I mean, you saw the, the value in it, um, the transformation, the power of that transformation. Uh, just stepped up every, every step of the way that, that you could to learn more, to contribute more. And um, you're not a classically trained martial artist, but your technique, I would hold your physical technique up to any first degree black belt I've ever met. But more than that is the contribution you made from, from your heart and you know from your belly to help people make a difference in their lives. And I watched you, th th your natural talents, your physical talent is just natural, you just came in with it. And I watched you um, with the psycho-spiritual, the emotional process, hang back a little, a little bit at a time, step up and step up until um, I think it was about six months ago when you were coming back from, you came in, Steve came in from his vacation with his sons, they were in Mexico, he knew that I was on the mat during combat by myself and he knew it wasn't safe so he showed up on a Sunday afternoon to help me and um, I stepped back and I, I watched you and I thought I could leave the room right now and this group would be completely safe in my hands. So that's when I made the call to Patrick and then I made the call to Doug to say this man, if anyone that I know deserves to be acknowledged as a martial artist and a teacher. So it's a privilege to have you as a friend and as a student and you know, this is a new beginning as, as part of this community and um, I want to thank you sweetie. Well, I want to thank you been one of my greatest teachers, you know, the way you are just so present and so clear, um, it's just been a pleasure, you know, to, to drink that in and learn from you. Um, it's, it hasn't always been easy, but it's uh, always uh, rewarding. No, it isn't you know, always easy, and, and as I have learned from you, and I trust you as my brother. No, that is not something that... Um, how does that something that happens often? Um, I treasure that. Sifu, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, I've learned things from you and from this work that I really uh, have only dreamed of and um, never really thought was quite possible. This work means the world to me and as do you. And I would just like to take this opportunity to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's my privilege. Um, I'm so grateful for the contribution that you make. You've made the work bigger. That the circle just keeps getting bigger. And I am grateful to have this time with, with my teacher, with my Sifu, and having meet Steve, have the opportunity for them to get to know each other better. Um, Doug and I have a 35 year relationship and um, not lightly given the trust that we hold here and that when you're in you're in for the long haul so five years is not bad sweetie but you're stuck with us <laughs> till the end of time yeah okay <laughs>